If you were only going to learn two casts in your whole fly fishing career, our first two would have to be the absolute best, period. The standard overhead cast aside, the roll cast and the reach mend are the absolute most versatile techniques that I know of. There's no doubt that those two casts are going to get you more fish than any others. On a scale of 1 to 10 in fishiness, both get a solid 10. The roll cast really is a special cast. It's the foundation of all spay casts and once mastered it opens up a myriad of really useful casts for both the single and the double handed rod. You're going to find once mastered time after time a well executed roll cast is going to become your get out of jail free card. Once mastered you'll be well on your way to learning the dynamic roll, the jump roll, the switch cast, the single spay, the double spay and almost every spay cast there is. The roll cast is the cast to use when you have limited or no back cast room. It's also a really stealthy cast when executed well and it's also probably the most efficient way to get a fly up and back into the water and fishing again. The roll cast reduces unnecessary false casting and the likelihood of tangles and injury. It's also a really great cast for lifting up heavy sink tips and shooting heads. With practice the roll cast can also be really accurate and if you want a cast that's going to open up a much broader range of fishing opportunities for you then this is it. Like all spay casts the roll cast is a cast in two parts. The first being the setup and line positioning, the second the loading move and delivery. Now you can practice this on grass or water. I find that grass is actually better for teaching as the lack of surface tension quickly teaches students to apply power smoothly. If they don't, the line simply pulls out through the grass and it won't lift. If you can do this on grass, you can do it almost anywhere. With 5 or 6 metres of line off the tip, slowly draw the rod tip back until your reel is about air level. Your elbow should be bent slightly and the rod should be slightly canted out and back behind you. What we're looking for here is the big curve of line hanging from your rod tip down onto the water in front of you. That sag of line is called a D-loop for obvious reasons and it's that D-loop that does all the work in a roll cast. The rest of the line that's lying on the water out in front of you should be pointing roughly in the direction you want it to travel. Remember that the standard roll cast is not a change of direction cast. Now that you have a nice D-loop form, the rest is actually pretty easy. The D-loop is going to help load the rod against the surface tension of the line out in front of you and it's going to lift it off the water and deliver it to the target. The second part of the roll cast is exactly the same as the forward stroke on your standard overhead cast. Power the rod tip along slightly inside and parallel to the line that you have lying on the water in front of you. Think railway tracks, keep them parallel. Accelerate forward with smooth power application and finish with a crisp stop. Smooth acceleration is the name of the game here. Think start slow, finish fast. Don't overpower the stroke. The correct amount of power is always that which just lifts the line and has enough energy to turn it over and straighten it out, not punch it into the next territory. Here are some tips. The amount of line in your D-loop affects how much line you can lift. The bigger the D-loop, the more line you can lift off the water. Kicking back, a larger, more dynamic D-loop can be done by adding a haul on the back cast. Adding a haul on the forward delivery will greatly increase line speed and distance. Once you have this two-part static roll cast organised, try running the two parts together in a more fluid, continual motion. You'll find that you can create a much more dynamic D-loop and cast much more line. <laughs>